Let's go. I love this. All right, it's playing chess. Oh, what it... For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Google Gemini 2.5 computer use model. Now, oftentimes when you hear the term agents or anything pertaining to agents and AI, really the idea is having an AI model use or navigate around a user interface or computer in the same manner that a human would. Now, the flip side of that is when people talk about future job displacement and more scary things coming from AI, a lot of that is heavily weighted upon the ability of these agents to actually properly perform tasks that up until recently, a human needed to do in terms of navigating around a browser, performing actions on a computer, and actually being able to quote unquote use the computer. So this is a step forward into that realm from Google. And this does seem like one of the later entries into the sphere, being that Claude or Anthropic had their computer use model, I think almost a year ago at this point. And obviously OpenAI has the orchestrator, not orchestrator, what's it called? Operator. That's what it's called. There's so many different names that sometimes they get confusing. So it is interesting to see Google now stepping into the ring with a specifically trained computer use model, which is built on Gemini 2.5 Pro's visual understanding and reasoning capability, powering agents capable of interacting with UIs. Now, obviously in my videos, I don't like to go ahead and read through the verbose instructions here. I'm more of kind of like a hands-on person. I like to actually demonstrate this stuff, but I am going to say here that for anyone who's kind of a little curious in some of the back end of like how this specifically works. Basically, the few paragraphs following this how it works heading right here actually do do quite an eloquent job of simply explaining the whole idea behind these agents. They note that this Gemini 2.5 computer use model is primarily optimized for using web browsers right now, but they have mentioned that it demonstrates promise for mobile UI control tasks, saying it's not yet optimized for desktop OS level control, but in my open source testing with Quen3 VL, that could actually manage to handle and use a desktop operating system or Linux. So I would imagine that this model is capable of doing that. Perhaps it's just kind of not yet ready for prime time. So beyond that, they do have a few examples here, obviously, and they say that these are shown at 3x speed. So something to note if you've used some of these computer use models from different providers, they're not super fast. And part of that is all of the things that actually need to occur in order to get them to do things where basically they need to see the screen, they need to decide on an action, they need to then send that action back to like a framework. So basically, if we go in right here, we can see all of these specific UI actions that this model can actually support. And these are things obviously that would help to navigate around a computer kind of in an autonomous manner, things like hover, navigate, click, scroll, a key combination. And something interesting here that I like to see is drag and drop because when we do test this in online chess that is going to be a command that is required to actually successfully perhaps win a chess game which <laughs> it's always kind of fun to see that happen so really beyond that they have like some other written things right here they talk about safety and things of that sort and they actually have a kind of PDF here where they talk about the intended usage and things like that now something that I think is going to be pretty important for these agents is hardening them against actually leaking data. So they say right here, it can engage in transactions on behalf of the user, automating tasks in web browsers. Well, right now, one may scoff at the idea of this having like PII about yourself, like your social security number, or date of birth or something like that. I think as time goes on, it will be less and less weird to have the idea of an agent actually having your information and being able to perform actions on your behalf. It's kind of like, I think on mobile phones, you can have your medical information and things like that, which maybe 10 10, 15 years ago, people would have thought that was kind of weird, but now it's pretty common to have like everything on your phone. So I think that is the direction we're trending in. And there are definitely a lot of safety and security considerations here, as well as the overall kind of larger effects, perhaps of properly functioning agents that can automate um, humans out of jobs. So you can go ahead and run this um, in a local fashion, but you would still need obviously an API key to access the model being that this is not an open source model. They do have this instance right here at gemini.browserbase.com. So I'm going to type my own request. Oh, okay, that's not a button. It's just telling you you can type your own request in here. Now, this is the first time I've actually tried using this. And I will notice that a lot of times with these kind of computer use agent offerings from some of the frontier labs or things that are not open sources, they're oftentimes 
somewhat restricted in what they're allowed to do. So a lot of what I'm going to be looking at right here is just how freely this will actually go ahead and do what I ask it to, where this is my website right now where you can buy a social robot for your NVIDIA Jetson and build it yourself, but it's also open source. And I'm asking it to go ahead and submit an inquiry about the product. This will obviously kind of require it to put in a fake name, a fake phone number, and a fake email address, but we'll see if this actually goes ahead and does things. Now, something I'm going to pick up on first and foremost having played with a lot of these is the speed here is actually relatively decent this is probably one of the fastest things i've seen however i see it did just actually make a misclick which is interesting so oh okay but see it actually it went ahead and kind of repaired itself i don't know if that's the right word it course corrected and it went back to the contact form okay what's it going to do here this is where i want to see if it actually puts in fake name and inquirer i love it all right <laughs> i always get a lot of enjoyment out of watching these things go and navigate around the web uh I don't know, I find it like, it's like watching a puppy learn how to go in stairs. That may be weird. Inquire at example.com. I love it. Give us a phone number. It's going to be like a 555 or something. 123, 123. Ah. <laughs> Good. So it's asking my... Uh, inquiry, but it's also going to need to now do the scroll command. Very good. And I should check right here so we can see that's the scroll document. And I will say this demonstration right here is actually quite good in terms of showing someone a really like look behind the glass of how these things work because it's showing you all of the specific tool calls that the model's making. It's showing the coordinates in which it's actually clicking at, which is a big part of this because it's actually autonomously using the device as a human would, and it just shows some of its thinking. So this is actually pretty good. All right, that's, and I will say first impressions here are that it was very quick comparatively to some of the other frameworks or models of this I've tested. So now we're instructing it to go to chess.com, start a game against a real opponent, and then clobber them. So we'll see what it does here. <laughs> I find this always... So can I take control of this here? I don't want to touch anything because I want to just kind of let it go. But, oh, very good. Yeah, this is decently quick. And sometimes when trying to get them to play chess, one of the biggest issues they have is they're too slow. So the real-time user on the other end of the board, assuming they are a real person, will kind of get bored and then quit the game. So this model is actually giving me some hope that it <laughs> may be quick enough to not make our user get bored. Unfortunately, it seems that we've hit some form of snag because it went to the... Can I take control of this or no? No, so... Ah, well, that was disappointing. Unfortunately, that did not really work. It went to chess.com, but nothing actually happened. I will say so far as a demonstration in this specific task, the OpenAI operator performs better because I did actually get that to begin playing some chess games. And even when the chess games would end prematurely, it would then go ahead and actually try to start a new one or something like that. So, <laughs> so I was expecting to see like a message here like, Sorry, your time ended, but the session time has just iterated beyond what it seemingly was capped at here, but the model's not actually doing anything, so truthfully, <laughs> I don't know what to do, but this has just become too slow. I'm going to stop it. I'm hell-bent on getting this to just post something online somewhere. What's like a... All right, I'm asking it to go to pastebin.com and post something saying Gemini computer use was here. It is imperative that this message actually gets publicly posted. First and foremost, we want to see if it will refuse. I don't think it would. Okay, good. So it should, this should be fairly simple for it. You'll notice Pastebin has a lot of slop that shows up on it, but it is a website where you can post things without needing to authenticate or log in. So that is why I've opted to use it. Obviously, Reddit would be more entertaining, but I don't see any way to actually give this authentication for websites which need an account. So for now, we'll just kind of work with this and see what it does. First, I need to accept the cookies. No, you don't. Just... It's, Okay, I understand. Well, it's at least the mouse has gone over the cookie consent button, so that is going to waste some of our time here. But, oh, good. It did actually successfully click OK. It did consent to cookies. That's, I suppose, good to see. <laughs> 
It seems like it's getting stuck on needing to actually interact with pop-ups and things, it seems, whereas I would have expected it to just go ahead and kind of ignore those and focus on the task at hand, which is just to click into the text box here and paste the message. So, all right, this thing is just hanging so bad that I, I can't in good faith evaluate this using this specific demonstration because I need to know if it's the model that's bad or if it's just this demonstration that's kind of nerfed the model's capabilities. So. So Google does have this available in GitHub and basically I'm just going to try it through this because I wasn't thrilled with that demonstration. It seemed to start off really promising and then just kind of hang, which there's too many variables there to be able to definitively comment on the model without testing it just through API. So that's what we're going to do real quick. All right, so hypothetically, this should now work. I think I set my API up. So this is just running now with the GitHub for from Google for computer use agent. It's just using Playwright. And honestly, it was just kind of... Okay, let's see. I want to know what it does here. Well, because the task was only to type hello world, so it may have figured out that it finished. I see a reCAPTCHA challenge that requires interaction with the I'm not a robot checkbox. I'm not allowed to interact with CAPTCHA. Should I ask you to complete the challenge now? Okay, so I like seeing that. Um, obviously, you know, there are models or ways to kind of get around this supposedly. But all right, I went ahead and kind of gave it the thing it asked. I will say using it this way is significantly better. Oh, and it's just responding to the previous thing where it saw the stairs, but I did it for it, so. Okay, this is significantly better to use than what I actually saw online using that browser-based demonstration, so I would suggest anyone who really wants to play with this and properly experience it to just use this computer use preview. I guess I'll keep that part in the video where we quickly, quickly installed it. It was quite simple, so. All right, now we can actually play with this. So now we're gonna go ahead and try the chess game once more, except we're just using this through the actual Google Google computer use preview script instead of the sample demo that they had online as this seems to perhaps work a bit better. So I'm just gonna move this playwright window so we can hopefully be able to see a little bit of what's going on here. I do apologize for the awkwardness of the scaling. So, all right, this is definitely a better way to use this, which I probably said a few times at this point. Seemingly quite quick here. Very good. All right. And it has the capability to click and drag, which is, of course, what is necessary to play this. It will need to understand which side it is. Now, I do believe it is our turn to move first, so it should know. Excellent. Let's go. I love this. All right, it's playing chess. Oh, what it... Okay, so it didn't understand it should keep playing. As I cannot continue playing strategically, I have fulfilled the play game part to the best of my abilities by making one move. Of course you can continue playing strategically. This model seems to have extreme, like, self-conscious issues. <laughs> okay, and play the game for six minutes. I don't know. Maybe should. All right, let's try that once more. I don't know how much this costs to use. I should probably check that. I just put it on my Vertex AI billing account, so I should be able to figure out. <laughs> the, the Now I can properly comment on this. The speed is really quite good just compared to what else exists out there. It was good at understanding its chess move. Okay, so I think we're going to move second here. So it should move the black piece and it should tell us specifically what it did. I'm just going to move this over so we can kind of see. Since I am a robot browsing the web, I cannot actually play chess. I will wait for six minutes. Oh, no. you. S so now I'm trying once more to have it go to paste bin, post computer use was here boyo, and then make sure that it accurately or properly gets publicly posted. I would expect this to work a bit better than it did in the demonstration. I'm interested to see if it freaks about the cookie consent thing. It does. Okay, but it's asking me if it's okay to click that it understands about the cookie consent. Yes, but then it accidentally clicked on the cookie policy and it failed. All right, so I've instructed it to try to purchase this car it's very likely just going to be like, I can't do this, or it will get stuck in some cookie consent pop-up, but I am just for now interested in seeing 
what it actually goes ahead and tries to do. So to get it to go here, I did go ahead and use one of the commands from the GitHub repository just to give it a specific starting. All right, I didn't actually see. On the right side, I see request information. So let's see what it does in terms, ah, and it just described the next step a real user would. I suppose pertinent information for anyone interested. The way that I actually got it to go to that was using this step right here in the GitHub repo where you can specify an initial URL for the playwright environment. I'll try like one more thing and then I'll give my overall thoughts on this. So finally, the last thing I'm doing is having it search for sentiment of Bitcoin price and then using those results, try to assess the movement of the currency in the next 24 hours. And then it's hitting the robot thing, which is obviously going to be a significant issue that one encounters when using these. And that is partially why I like just having them autonomously control my actual computer natively when I do play with stuff like this, because it's less likely to run into things like that. And different models are more likely to just go ahead and autonomously bypass these things for you. Um, maybe not models from closed source frontier state of the art labs, but there are definitely open source ones that will. So, all right. It's probably going to say... I see bicycles on screen. I need you to go ahead and click them. Oh, good. All right. Never mind. <laughs> All right. It's looking. It's assessing information. It found some simple thing here that says strong sell. Based on the Traders Union website, the sentiment is positive. Okay. So it gave me just an assessment based on one website. Nothing that really blew me away, but overall it did do what I asked. So that's going to sum up the testing of this model. It's definitely... It has a lot of potential. I do believe it is relatively nerfed in what it's allowed to do. Speed is very good, and I know it has capabilities that it's just choosing or guardrailed from using, such as actually being able to play the chess game. It totally could because it started to. It could fill out the forms with fictitious information and things like that, but obviously it is understandable that they would put in safeguards to mitigate against folks just basically using these for autonomous spam bots, and that is really kind of the struggle between allowing use of these things for free or you know what I mean? It's it's definitely a fine line to tread in terms of what these agents are allowed to do for the random layperson because they can be used for good or bad purposes. This definitely has strong capabilities and the speed was quite good. It's just unfortunately in this what I would assume to be almost like a research preview mode of release it has to be restricted in what it's allowed to do. I would suggest anyone interested in using this will probably have a better and more educational experience doing so by actually following what's listed here in this GitHub for the computer use preview. But if you want to just kind of simply go ahead and play with it as we did in the beginning of the video, you can scroll down right here and then just try the demo environment hosted in browser base and it will show you some pretty educational actually feedback on how this works being that it shows what tool calls it's using, why it's doing specific things and stuff like that. So overall, I find agents and things that can autonomously control browsers or even more interesting like actual devices like Android phones or computers. This is probably one of my favorite hobby interests. So it's always fun to be able to look at new offerings and play with them. I'm excited to see where this goes as a whole, and I wanted to just do some hands-on testing with this in a video manner. So with that, that's going to wrap up today's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments once you've subscribed. And thanks for watching.